Hi guys, David here. I'm with my two little ones, Chip and Fish, and today we're going to be talking about bonding with and taming your new little ones. I'm going to be talking about some of the various techniques you'll be using to get your little birds used to you and stepping up just as nicely just like Mr Chip did for me. And I'm going to be talking about some of the patience you're going to need to show through this process. It's a long process with some birds, they're all individuals, and you need to take your time and make sure that they're happy and you're happy. So you just put your bird home, you're really excited to start the process of getting them used to you and taming them, bonding with them. One of the very best first steps you can take is passive interaction. That means just sitting near them, being near them, getting them used to you, you getting used to them. You can just sit on your phone, you can just watch television, you can just talk to other family members, just do the sort of things you'd normally do but in close proximity to your birds. This gets them used to you and they start to see you as part of their family. After you've sat with your bird, the next step you want to be taking is feeding them through the bars. This is a great bridging step between passively interacting with them and taking a more physical, interactive approach. So all you have to do is find out their favourite treat, so you can try loads of different things. Our birds absolutely love millet. All you need to do is just get your bird's favourite treat, just offer it up to them through the bars. As you can see, Chip is eagerly taking it and Fish is having to reach over a little bit, but you can see that they're enjoying the treat and through this, you're building trust with them, you're actually bonding with them. Another technique you can try through the bars is target training. This involves the use of a target stick, you can use any sort of stick as long as it's bird safe, a clicker and your bird's favourite treat. All you do is you get your bird to touch the target stick, click and then immediately reinforce the bird. This is a great way of building trust and mutual communication with your bird because they're learning a new trick and they're also learning that if they touch the target stick, they immediately get rewarded. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about this, my partner Sophie has a video on target training where you can learn a lot more about it. The next step, once you've got your bird used to being around you and started to build trust with it, is putting your hand in the cage. I'd like to leave a disclaimer at this point. If you've got a cockatoo or a macaw or a rescue bird, it may not be the wise course of action. It may be better to use a perch instead of putting a perch in and letting them get used to stepping up and down on that perch before using your hand. With cockatiels and other birds, this technique will work, especially smaller ones. If they bite you, it's not going to do too much damage. Just be careful. All you need to do for this step is take your hand and put it in the cage. It's as simple as that. If you have a large uh, front door to your cage like ours, you're not going to want to put it through there because your bird might escape, so you could use a food hatch. This step is probably going to be one of the longest parts of um, taming your bird and getting them used to you. You're going to need to keep your hand perfectly flat and perfectly still. You can hold a treat between your fingers to try and tie your bird over, but it's important you do not move it. All you need to do is pop your hand through the hatch, keep it nice and still, let them come to you. You're going to need to show a lot of patience here. They won't be as keen as Mr Chip is on my hand. The treat may help, but just take your time, let them come to you, and eventually they will see your hand less of a threat and they will sit on it. So the next step, once your bird's used to interacting with you, it's used to stepping up with your hand onto a branch, it's getting them out of your cage and interacting them there. You can see chip and fish are pretty used to being out and about the cage, it doesn't bother them. But still, you need to reinforce that bond often. So for this, you have them step up onto your hand on a branch and you just give them their favourite treat, which Chip has just very kindly stolen from me. I'll do the same with Mr Fish, if you'll let me. Again, your bird may not want to step up, so you have to be patient and they may decide to fly off. So you need to be aware of that as well. They may just fly off and you may need to fetch them and you need to be aware that they may need to return to their cage, relax before you try again. So once your bird's more confident being outside and around you, the next thing you, step you can take is bonding through training. Mr Chip here is excellent with training and Mr Fish is quite good at his singing and learning new songs. So what you can do is teach them various tricks. These can be as simple as target training tricks like spin, um, step up, and all sorts of things like that, or more advanced tricks involving toys. So these are some of the tricks that we've taught Pickles, and it shows just how much he trusts us and how much he enjoys just interacting with us. Spin! As you can see, she just does it instantly, and all of these were trained through positive reinforcement and some through targeting. It's also important to praise your bird as well, because while they may not understand exactly what you're saying, and some people may think it's silly, they understand your tone of voice and it does reinforce things positively. So, wave! Clever girl. We're just going to wait for her to finish her treat, we're going to do one more for you to see. Shake! Good girl. 
Another way you can bond and interact with your bird is training through toys. It uh, uses many of the same principles as all the other training we talked about. All it is is having your bird do something and reinforcing it through positive reinforcement. As you can see, Chip is very keen to put his um, tokens into the box and it just reinforces the behaviour and <laughs> as you can see Fish wants to play as well. And it's just something fun that you and the bird can do, it's rewarding for you both. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about this form of training, I've got a video on it and I will leave a link in the description for you. The important issue I want to touch on is broken trust. Now, you may build a very good bond with your bird, they may be completely hand tame, quite happy to sit on you like Miss Pickles here is with me, but if you break that trust, you may have to rebuild that bond from start. Now, I'm not saying you as a bird owner would do that deliberately, it may happen by accident. Now, it may be because you have to take them to the vet, or it may be because you have to restrain them to clip their nails, or take a look at them if they have an issue. It's very important that if this happens and your bird does start showing signs of broken trust, for example, biting or backing away from you, that you take it back a step. Give them time, interact with them, take the steps for this video, start hand feeding them through the bars, let them come to you. Just relax, take your time with them and let that trust slowly be rebuilt. We've had to do the same with our birds. Fish had a very big issue of broken trust after we had to take him to the vet and it took a little while before he would allow us to pet him and sit on us again. If you get a hand reared bird, a bird from a pet shop or from a breeder that has been brought up by humans, you may find it's a little bit easier to bond with them. Um, these birds tend to be more expensive to buy and I'd always recommend maybe getting a rescue if you can because it does help. But if you do get a hand reared bird, it might be a little bit easier to bond with but it's important you follow these steps as well. Don't automatically assume that they're going to be okay with being touched or quite happy to just be stroked or petted or whatever else you want to do. Take your time with them, give them a moment and let them set the pace basically. Just on the topic of hand rearing and getting new birds, there is a little bit of a misconception that if you get more than one bird, Miss Pickles, if you get more than one bird that they are more difficult to bond with and that they may not want to interact with you. It is not true. We got both fish and chip at the same time and they're completely fine interacting with us. They interact with each other, but they interact with us as well. And generally it's better if you can to get multiple birds because they can't communicate properly with us, they can't communicate properly with other species, and they're generally a lot happier. Miss Pickles is a slight exception here. She is a rescue. We got her on her own. And with Miss Pickles, we're hoping to find her a friend in the future, but with some rescues and some birds that have been brought up alone, they may not be okay with other birds, so it's important to remember that, that some birds are solo birds, although if you can have them with others, it is a preference, and it's much better for them. If you get a rescue bird, it's important to remember the rule of three. Now, the rule of three is, first three days, your new bird's going to be stressed, anxious, and getting used to its environment. For the first three weeks, it's going to be learning your routines, it's going to be starting to bond with you, and getting used to you. For the first three months, you may start to see some behavioural issues, their true personality come through. Now, please bear this in mind if you do get a rescue and keep it in mind with all the tips and tricks we le you've learned in this video. You need to take your time with these birds and you need to give them plenty of time and patience. The rule of three does apply to other rescue animals as well, so please do keep that in mind if you get dogs, cats or other animals too. Also, if you're bringing a rescue bird home and you have other birds, please do bear in mind you may need to quarantine it. Um, you don't know where that rescue bird's been, you don't know what sort of issues it may have with health, and these may transmit to other birds. Now, we're not talking about some sort of COVID situation here. You just need to keep them in another room and keep them separated and wash your hands between handling them. All you need to do is do this for a few weeks to a month, and you should be in the clear. If you're really worried, it's worth getting a vet checkup and making sure that your bird is okay. As with all training, it's important to go at the bird's own pace and your own pace. Take your time, relax. Let your bird tell you when it's feeling stressed. If it's backing away from you, you know you need to take it a bit slower. If it's showing signs of flapping away from you, it doesn't want to be near you, again, dial it back a bit. And I'd also like to mention that keeping trust and bonds is a constant process. You can't just hand tame a bird and just leave it to it. Eventually, if you don't reinforce it, you don't 
praise it, it will start to go back to its old tricks. It will just fly away from you. It won't be as interested in bonding with you. So just keep reinforcing, keep being positive, and you'll, you and your bird will have a happy and friendly relationship. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful and you may have picked up some tips and tricks about how to bond with your birdies. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to drop in the comments below. It would be also awesome if you could give me a sub. But in the meantime, I hope you have a great day and take care.